Good morning, this is Mr. Lowry. Today's objective is 3.6F. We will deepen our comprehension of increasingly complex text by making inferences and using evidence to support our understanding. So one thing I'm going to go over is on the test I see kids are not using text evidence. I'm going to show some examples of some good work to show kids who do use text evidence. And when I say text evidence, what I'm talking about is using the, finding the answer in the text and then putting that exact thing as their answer. Now this is the way that kids are, some kids are still doing, uh, they're, they're typing their answers in the Google Forms. It's just two words. It's not a real sentence. Um, they misspell words. So one of the things that we're showing, the main reason why we show this strategy is so kids are going back and finding the answers in the text instead of just coming to whatever writing whatever comes to mind. So we want them to get in this habit of going back and finding the answer in the text. And the way that we do that when they're here in person and actually have pencils and paper in their hand is to go back and underline it. Understand we're not doing this on the computer, but still the kids can go back and find the answer and then put that exact thing for their answer. And, and there's going to be a problem. They have to switch from one window to the other. I guess they could write it down on a piece of paper to make sure they're spelling it correctly, but this is something that we want the kids to take the time to do. When they do take the STAR test and reading, they have four hours to do it. The kids that don't get a good grade on the STAR test are the ones who don't go back and find the answer in the text. This student did. As we look at the first question, what did Johnny Appleseed wear on top of his head? This person put Johnny Appleseed would always wear a cooking pot on his head. If I go and actually look for the answer in the text, we're going to look at paragraph 2. Here's paragraph 1. Here's paragraph 2. Um, he was wearing a cooking pot on his head in place of a hat would be the exact answer. And then we would teach the kids to put a number 1 next to it just to identify that as being the answer to question number 1. I'm going to make that red and just so that it stands out. And then that, that, so they should say he wore or he was wearing a cooking pot on his head in place of a hat. That would be a complete answer. Or he was where he would always wear a pot on his head. But still, this kid answered with a complete sentence. It starts with a capital. It ends with a period. It has a subject. It has a predicate. It's a complete sentence. Everything's spelled correctly. Why shouldn't they spell it correctly? Because the, the words are right here in the text. Number two. According to the text in paragraph two, why did people not have many visitors? Again, this is paragraph one. There's a space. Here's paragraph two. And what it says here is in those days. Sorry, I need to go back to my underlining. People did not have many visitors because they lived far apart. And that's all they need to put for their answer. And then again, what we would ask them to do is put number two next to the answer to indicate that it's the answer to number two. The people did not have many visitors because they lived far apart. That works good. Or they could just put people did not have many visitors because they lived far apart. Again, it starts with a capital letter, ends with a period. They spelled the words correctly because they're spelling them, they're getting them right there out of the text. Number three, what were Johnny's clothes made out of? This person put they were made out of coffee bags. Eh, it's close enough. Uh, but if they did use their text evidence right here, it says he wore clothing made of old coffee bags and that's it. That would be the exact answer. That is a complete sentence. If they capitalized, the H there. It's perfect. It's a complete sentence. Number four, explain how Johnny would get clothes from the people he visited. He would trade his apple seeds for clothes. This is where they're going to have to infer because it doesn't. And here we're, we're talking about making inferences. It doesn't say word for word exactly in the text. And the way I teach kids inferences is how in math, you know, we use multiplication or addition or subtraction. We find the exact answer. In reading, we make inferences when finding our answers. We're using, we're reading the text and we're putting clues together using the information in the text to infer the answer. 
And the reason he could do that, this child, is because here, those are the words of Johnny. Will you trade clothes for these apple seeds? So how did he get clothes? He traded clothes for apple seeds. He would trade his apple seeds for clothes. So this student did it correctly. That's the only thing that misses. There should be an S on seeds. Now, this kid, he was wearing a hat. That's what they put for their answer. I could tell this kid did not use text evidence. They did not go back and find the answer in the text. They just put whatever. And the question says, what did Johnny Appleseed wear on top of his head? He just wore a hat. Because this kid's not using text evidence, they're just thinking, what do people wear on their heads? Oh, they wear hats. Okay, I know this. Easy answer. He's wearing a hat. But if they'd actually gone back and looked at the text, it said here he was wearing a cooking pot on his head in place of a hat. So this kid did not go back to the text to find the answer. They did not use their text evidence. Again, I'm not asking that they underline the text. I'm just showing that this is how to find the answer in the text. Number two, according to the text in paragraph two, why did people not have many visitors? And this person said they did not have a lot of people. Again, they did not go back to say people did not have many visitors because they lived far apart. Yeah, I can understand again. There weren't as many people back then as there are now. There weren't cities like there are now. Because it says, this, it says that in paragraph one a long time ago, there were not many people in America. But still, they, the question was, why did they not have many visitors? They did not have many visitors because they lived far apart. Number three, what were Johnny's clothes made out of? Again, this kid didn't use text evidence to say, I know what clothes are made out of. Clothes are made out of fabric. Easy answer, but no, they got it wrong because, and this is a very smart student, but they didn't use their text evidence, so it doesn't matter. Again, it says here, he wore clothing made out of old coffee bags. Down here, number four, explain how Johnny would get clothes from people he visited. He did not have any clothes. And again, the answer is here. He would trade apple seeds for clothes. So this person got a zero. This is a very smart kid. They answered the questions, but they got a zero because they didn't go back. They didn't take the time to go back and find the answer in the text. Here's today's story, Joey's grandma. These are the questions that are in the Google form. What I typed here in red is how I would like the kids to answer the question so that they're answering, answering incomplete sentences again. Well, again, we're in third grade, they're not taking a star writing test, but you are taking the star reading test, and you will take the star writing test when you go to fourth grade. So it's my job to make sure at least kids can answer incomplete sentences. And so this is how I'm incorporating writing into the lesson. The first question is, who are the main characters in the story? The main characters are is how they need to start it. I should see that as they're answering Google Forms. Again, we're not in the second grade or first grade. We're not just typing two words for our answer. We need to answer in complete sentences. The kids need to know how to answer in complete sentences. Number two, explain what happened to Joey. Joey, and it says that here in paragraph two. Oh, and I will tell you, in par in number one, it's two names. There's, there's two names. There's two kids' names. They are the main characters. Number three, why does dad say the kids, uh, that should be what, I'm sorry, that's my typo and I couldn't change it, but it will. it is correct in the Google form. What does dad say the kids should do in order to help Joey? Dad says they can take, and again, that answer is here in paragraph one, two, three, four, paragraph four. But again, this is how they need to answer it. Dad says they can take. What you see in red is what I want the kids to type for their answer only they're going to put the answer instead of a blank space like I did. Number four, what words does Nathan use in order to describe Joey's grandma? Nathan says that she always, and that's right there down there in that paragraph. Again, this is how they need to answer the question. Number five, explain why Nathan and Megan don't want to visit Joey. They are afraid of someone. And then I'm not going to tell you the answers for those. Again, I'm just giving you examples. This is what I want to see. I want the, I want the students, I want all of my students to practice answering the questions with complete sentences because here in third grade, they need to know. 
what a complete sentence is, they need to know how to answer in a complete sentence. This is their social studies assignment. I took a better picture of it, actually, from the book. This picture is very fuzzy. This is the picture they will see in the Google form. And I'm just going to give them, uh, again, I'm going to answer, type how they need to answer the question. Number one says, what does the photograph show? This is the photograph. When you're answering this type of question, the kids need to use the caption. The caption is the words underneath the picture that explain what's happening in the picture. So in this case, it's kind of fuzzy there. They also mentioned it down here, but it says there below the picture, the powwow is a dance from the American Indian culture. So then they need to answer with that. Again, they need to form a complete sentence. And so they need to say, the picture shows and it shows a man should be dancing at a, and again, what the word is. I don't want to see them say, oh, okay, there's a guy dancing around, and it looks like he has an eagle costume is on. That is correct, but the kids need to use the caption. We need to get used to, in order to take the star test and get this type of question correct on the star test, they need to use the caption below the picture. Number two, what does the word diverse mean? To answer that question, they need to say, diverse means, and their answer. And it's right here. Many communities have diverse or blah, blah, two words. Or really, it's just one word. Number three, what does the word culture mean? Again, they would write, Culture means, and it's the exact sentence that they see the word in. Or they could even just answer it as, as thus, culture is, and that's the exact, again, I want them to write the sentence. This is using text evidence, it's right there. I don't need to see any misspellings of words or anything, because they can use that sentence right there for their answer, and then it'll be perfect. Again, my Google Classroom, under reading, this is the assignment. Here's Joey's grandma, the story that they're going to read. Click on it. They can read the story. Teachers, if you have the flatbed and the black cart, could you please bring them to the front office? And here's the Google form, Joey's Also, if you're on the grandma. arrival dismissal team, we will meet in the cafeteria, socially distancing, at 10 a.m. Thank you. And then underneath social studies is where they'll find people in communities. There's the picture. This is, it's a little bit more clear. Still the word powwow looks fuzzy. So just know that that is a picture of a man dancing at a powwow, which is powwow is really a dancing ceremony. All right. Thank you for watching the video. Good luck on your work. I hope you use text evidence and everyone gets a hundred. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Goodbye.